breathing doesn't happen again. Jana Novotny in her first Wimbledon final, certainly not disgraced. And overcome with the emotion of it all, which I'm sure is the reason she lost after being 4-1 ahead in the final set. BBC Two, because of the extended coverage of that very exciting ladies' doubles final at Wimbledon, this evening's scheduled edition of Scrutiny has now been displaced and can be seen at 8.30 on Monday morning on BBC Two. Well, coming up in about five minutes, Professor Christopher Frayling takes up the story of the face of Tutankhamun. And that's after the news now with Jenny Bond. President Clinton has announced he's to extend America's ban on testing nuclear weapons for a further 15 months, provided other countries do the same. Speaking in a radio address from Washington, he also said he was ready to try to negotiate a permanent worldwide ban. The United States was due to test three British warheads in Nevada over the next few years. All American and British underground nuclear tests were carried out in the Nevada desert, over 700 craters marking the intensity of Cold War efforts to make ever better warheads. By extending the test moratorium provided others join in, President Clinton signaled his hopes of agreeing a worldwide permanent ban. If these nations will join us in observing this moratorium, we will be in the strongest possible position to negotiate a comprehensive test ban and to discourage other nations from developing their own nuclear arsenals. Britain's warhead for Trident nuclear submarines have already been tested, but Britain wanted three more tests to help develop a new air launch weapon for tornado bombers. I think what we're really concerned about is as technology develops, it is always sensible, as long as nuclear weapons exist, that they should have the highest possible le level of safety and reliability. One way of helping achieve that has been testing. Uh, there may be other ways in which we can achieve the same results. Scientists at Aldermaston, where Britain's warheads are built, wanted testing to continue, but American experts say computer modelling and laser technology will overcome any problems, while opposition politicians welcome the decision. I don't think it matters to Britain. We've got our Trident weapon system already tested, and I think that this will be a great fillet to the non-proliferation treaty. It's wonderful news. With countries like North Korea having nuclear programs, America's worried about the spread of nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles to deliver them, and hopes a moratorium leading to a ban will put the brakes on such weapons. Mark Leighty, BBC News. Labour MPs have strongly criticised suggestions from government ministers that changes to the welfare system are being considered to discourage single-parent families. Today, the health minister, Tom Sackville, said the benefit system for unmarried mothers increased the illusion that it was all right to have a child willy-nilly. His comments came after the Welsh secretary, John Redwood, called for fathers to be pursued for maintenance before single mothers were given benefits. But the social security secretary, Peter Lilly, promised that people in need would still get the help they required. Bosnian Serbs have renewed their attack on Sarajevo with a heavy artillery bombardment. Over a thousand explosions were heard in one part of the capital alone. The latest shelling came at a time when fears about supplies of food and water are growing, with hospitals and medical supplies stretched. There are also signs of a bitter dispute among the defenders about whether to fight on or accept peace terms. The author Salman Rushdie has called on world leaders to condemn what he called the terrorism in Turkey yesterday when 35 people were killed. 
They died when Muslim fundamentalists burned a hotel at Sivas, where a translator of Rushdie's novel, The Satanic Verses, was staying. Mr. Rushdie said he was horrified by the incident. A two-day curfew has been imposed on the town. And that's all for now. There'll be a full bulletin of news and sport over on BBC One at 5 to 10. <laughs> Evening. It was another very warm day in many parts of the country, up to 28 degrees, for instance, in London. But those temperatures shaded off as one headed northwestwards, which sets the scene for tomorrow because it will be somewhat fresher in those northwestern areas. Still, though, fairly warm in the southeastern corner. Now, we do have some rain around at the moment, near Oban, for instance, as well as in the uh, southern uplands down towards Carlisle. And we will find some showery bursts of rain continuing into the night. And also, we'll find that it will become misty and murky and rather damp and drizzly in many places before the night's out, although somewhat clearer conditions will come down into the northwest, but a very warm, sticky night in the south, a somewhat fresher one in the north. Now there's the front producing those outbreaks of lightish rain. It's going to move on southwards throughout uh, the country during the course of tomorrow, but many places are going to start off on the grey, misty side, a little bit of rain and drizzle around, probably bright from the word go in the more sheltered eastern areas with some sunshine and brightening up, I think, in most places during the course of the day, although there could be the odd sort of shower scattered around here and there. Lightish ones in most places, some heavier ones in the northwest of Scotland. So number one, it is highly toxic, and number two, it is widespread. Fluoride is saving our teeth, but is it good for our health? I listen to what the experts in the medical field have to tell me. I am assured by them that it's safe. New research in America has uncovered disturbing findings. We have something that in our country is causing at least a 5% increase in cancer death rate. What's the point of having perfect peace if your quality of life in every other sphere may well be affected extensively? The F Factor Explored in a new series of Nature, Tuesday at 8 on BBC Two. Well, we're still running a little later than planned because of our extended live coverage from Wimbledon. But now on BBC Two, Christopher Frayling, in the second of his five-part series, The Face of Tutankhamun, reveals the secrets of the newly discovered royal tomb. <laughs> 